Hey, Jim. Hey, Joe. How are you doing? What's going on? How are you doing today? Good. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure good. to be talking to you again. Yeah, it's good to see. Where are you located now? Uh, in France. So in a, in a near a town called Compiègne near Paris, an hour north of Paris. Okay, cool. Well, the last time we we caught up was in 2022. And I think we were right on that edge of the pandemic kind of easing up and still kind of surviving it. But now that we're out, you have Funk Aquarius, you have new things going on. Talk to me a little bit about how you got through that time period and how it, how it feels to have new material out now. Yeah, you know, it feels great. And yeah, we, we spoke last and it was, yeah, you're right. It was the end of the COVID thing. And I was starting to um, produce these things, you know, like online with my friends recording in their homes and I was recording my parts at my place. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a new way of doing things kind of, you know, for me at least, you know, producing stuff like that. And yeah, it's been exciting. So I've started this new, um, so the Aquarius Funk piece is also a microtonal tune, like, like, last, like the last one. I'm getting into microtonal music. Um, so yeah, that's one that I... I also have this, I've got this other project at the moment. It's, it's kind of, um, you know, I recorded in the studio last year with the trio and it's not microtonal stuff. This will come out later this year, but you know, in the meantime, I've been producing these singles. So there was Bitcoin soup and now Aquarius funk, and I'm working on a third one now. Um, so hopefully, you know, one day they might form an album together if I, if I get enough material and it will all be microtonal. Uh, stuff so so you know so we have a sort of a central musical theme to it yeah so what what was kind of the idea the driving force behind coming to this microtonal this new sound uh yeah so so it's new to me again but right but composers have been doing it you know for a long time in both sure. the classical tradition and in jazz music and stuff and i've um you know when i was studying at berkeley um in boston back in uh well, two thousands, yeah, in the late two thousands, right? Well, I, I had this teacher. One of my teachers was David Fusinski. You, you, you probably know his work yeah. too. And he's a he's a fusion, uh, jazz fusion guitarist. And he's got this um, double necked guitar with uh, one fretless and one fretted uh, neck, right? And on the fretless, he plays all this microtonal um, stuff. And he he got me into those um, well that kind of music and. Uh, so there's, you know, several ways of looking at it. You, you can look at it through the classical tradition and, and see what composers have been doing. But also, uh, I'm interested in the more world music aspect. You know, if you if you start studying the Arabic uh, makams, the scales they use in the Middle East, uh, you, you'll see that they have uh, lots of microtonal notes going on in there as well. So, so yeah, and Fusinski, he's he's interested in all of this stuff. Very open-minded uh, musician, and he he got me into that in the first place. So that why that's why it's, it meant a lot to, uh, for me that he could he accepted to collaborate with me on that first uh, piece in 2022 on Bitcoin Soup. He was uh, he was excited to play on that too. So that's great, and and he's been really helpful too in you know giving me feedback and yeah. So it's great. It's great to have him as a sort of a mentor. And now you know we're playing together on, on this, so it's really really cool so talk to me a little bit about the band how how long has it been around how did it come together how does it work yeah so that started out when i was so well in paris with uh yeah buddies from around here when i was in my 20s and so it was a trio initially with uh, bass and drums and piano and yeah so we taught a bit we we did a first record called word out that was back in 2009 and it was mostly yeah original compositions maybe one or two arrangements here and there and some free improvisation too on that first album. And then six years later, so at the beginning it really started as a band, but then I kind of took the leadership of that thing and it became sort of my band. And so six years later, I, I produced a second album and that was Spirit of the Snail. And that was also a bunch of my compositions and still in the trio format, but I invited a, a French harpist. Her name is Isabelle Olivier. She lives in Chicago half of the time too. So she's got a connection to the US as well. And we did so a bunch of freely improvised pieces with her along alongside my compositions. So it's a mix of original music and free improv. And and then and then we talked with you last time and I was yeah. releasing the um, but actually we didn't talk about Bitcoin soup. We talked about the I was releasing an album a live in Japan album. Yes. Time, I think, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's it. Yeah, yeah. 
So that one, along with a single that I, one of the first things I produced from home and it was called Lesser Vice and that's, that's a reggae dub kind of jazz vibe, that one. And so that's what I was releasing at the time. And since then I've been preparing a new studio album. It's not out yet and released this Aquarius Funk uh, in January. So yeah, so that's it. And we, you know, I've toured a bit with the band, played mostly in France. And also we played at the Malta Jazz Festival back in, that was in 2009 or 10. And, and I played in Japan as well because, you know, so my wife who's playing percussion on the track actually, uh, she's Japanese and we get to go there often. And I have um, mates over there who, whom I met at Berkeley too. And so I got a Japanese version of the trio. So we just, last year we did a really nice gig in, in Tokyo. It was fun. Small jazz club, but very intimate setting and very, very nice. So I've got the Japanese team and sort of the French team, although it, I should really say international because I'm not really playing with French musicians here. It's uh, an American drummer and Canadian bass player. So there you go. Yeah. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this? <laughs> well, you know, I like to say if you can get the eardrums tickled by those microtones a little bit, that's nice because it's not, yeah, obviously it's not a very mainstream thing to, to, to be listening to, although I think more and more people are getting into it. But but yeah, I hope they, they're intrigued by, by the sound, which again has been around for a long time. And you know, traditionally, uh, a lot of cultures have been using microtones. I mean, in the West, we ended up with this 12-tone equal temperament system that we know today, right? The, the equal division of the octave in 12, like on the, like the keys of the piano, right? They're, they're, that's equally tempered. Uh, since Bach, you know, but but originally, when you think about it, lots of cultures have been using different tuning systems for for centuries and even more than that, millennia, right? So I'm just hoping that you know you can you know, intrigue some the, the listener a little bit and maybe give them some sort of uh, make them want to check out some more microtonal stuff, different sure. music. Yeah. So what are you doing for live shows now that we're getting entering the warm months? The, the year is opening up more. What's going on with you as far as all of that? Oh, yeah. So well, actually, we played a lot around um, during the winter, but that was with a different band. So I'm not going to talk about this today. But we do have, um, so I'm preparing for the CD release, which is going to be, and, you know, oddly enough, that Aquarius Funk piece is not going to be on the CD because, again, that's like a, a side project that I'm building year after year. Yeah. But, but we, so, yeah, I'm preparing that CD release. There'll be videos and there'll be, a record obviously and a gig in belgium so far that's what i've booked but i'm gonna i'm gonna release it i'm gonna do a cd release in, in a club in paris too i mean i haven't been in contact with them yet but usually they always they always you know uh agree to have me there so i think it's going to work out so yeah that that will be probably around september and and the gig in belgium is in november so so in the fall there'll be stuff related to the the new album the new word out uh, music yeah yeah so the one thing about living through this pandemic was there was a lot of people that were leaving big cities. And I know Europe, like in America, especially like leaving New York, the rent was too high. There was a lot of uncertainty. Students weren't sure if they wanted to pursue this crap that didn't pay them a lot to begin with. But I think Europe always rolls differently with jazz. What's your sense now that things are, are kind of back into rhythm? Live shows are happening. Things are happening. What's the what's the uh, the audience feel the the overall allure of jazz do you think it's stronger now or what's your sense yeah that's a good question i don't know if it's stronger you know actually when when the pandemic hit i was in living in new york city so i'm one of those people who left new york right and to to go to a more countryside uh place except you know i didn't stay in the states but i i left with my wife we came back to to france you know or oh, actually we we went through iceland we lived for uh, we lived there for a few months in reykjavik and we thought maybe we we stay there, but then eventually we decided to go back to France because, you know, the scene is well. Actually, we met some cool musicians in Iceland too, but the scene is very small. And we thought, you know, it, maybe it's better for us to be somewhere a bit busier. And and yeah, it's been good since then. We've been so 2023 has been a busy year. I've been touring quite quite a lot. So in duo with my wife, we have this other project I was talking about, and we've been able to travel and play but not so much in france so we went to estonia we went to bulgaria romania uh, uh, slovakia so a lot of eastern european countries and so over there the vibe was great and people were really happy and eager to to listen to some music and yeah i think it gave them some 
some good vibes. Yeah, they they yeah. came to us and they said, uh, yeah, they, I think they need hope, you know, right right now, and hopefully that our music can can provide a bit of that uh, joy and yeah, you know. I I'm reading a book about kind of the construction of uh, Kind of Blue, and it really kind of hones in on Coltrane and Miles and all those guys and how their paths kind of intersected for that magical studio, and when miles was starting out he went to france at one point and was so in love with being there and not being looked at with the skin color and just just the way things rolled and i i wonder because i'd been i i went to i i flew into paris right before 9 11 happened in 2001 and i felt like that when i was there there was this level of there was just this good cauldron this good feeling that i'd never felt before and i'm curious is that something that's that's persisted? Is there kind of a good kindred spirit that's going on where you're at? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I think Paris is a very open place and lots of different cultures mixing and mingling, you know, because, you know, France used to have these colonies. So, I mean, it's not all good about it, right? But I mean, we now we have lots of different people in, in the city and, and it's great for a mix of influence and music. So I guess it's different from when Miles was there because at the time it was probably you know a different era but yeah yeah but yeah yeah it's still you know still happening and, and now i'm finding a lot of that spirit in in eastern eastern europe actually because i guess eastern europe is a bit like like, like the way paris was 50 years ago you know so yeah. you can and i think people go out a lot you, that the cafes are more bustling i mean in paris too but and it's hard to get to, to find gigs in paris nowadays because it's it's very crowded and especially after the pandemic everyone wants to wants to play which is totally normal i understand it but the rents are getting higher and for the club owners it's it's getting challenging too and for the record labels too you know so they need to be well it's the it's the economics right they need to make it happen so it's it's not easy for anyone but yeah but you know so i'm going in the self produced route and uh, yeah it's been working for for me and my wife so that's that's good good deal so if anyone wants to pick up this single, you said you got a new album coming out. There's live shows that are going to happen in the fall. Anything and everything in your world, Jim, where can people go and consume? Right. So, yeah, it, well, online, right? So they can, you can find the single for free on a lot of different platforms, right? If you go on your regular Spotify, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, or if you have a Deezer subscription, you can find it there. But what was interesting is I met them. So we played in Estonia, in Tallinn uh, last year. And the club owner, he started this fair sort of fair trade platform for musicians it's called fair muse or fair mus i don't know how you pronounce it in estonian so mostly estonian artists on there right now but it's based on the idea that you know you can support your favorite artists by by paying a subscription on, on fair Muse, and then uh it's like it's it's like a, a fair way of dividing because i don't know I'm, i don't know the the details of it but you know i know that on spotify it's hard for smaller artists to get their their share uh, whereas on this platform, it's uh, it's easier. I mean, it's designed for that, right? So that that's one way. And of course, you can go on, on to Bandcamp as well and grab it there if you want to purchase or download it. And then you can visit us on our, on our website. So my website is uh, Fennel Jazz, F-U-N-N-E-L-L, jazz.eu. And you can find all the info there too. Excellent. Jim, thank you for reaching out again. It's great to catch up with you. Good luck with, with all of the work and everything that's coming up. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Joe, for having me on Neon Jazz once again, and all the best uh, in Kansas City then.